NASA astronaut Johnny Kim and two Russian crewmates arrived at the International Space Station on Tuesday on board a Russian spacecraft. According to Associated Press a Soyuz booster rocket lifted off as scheduled from the Russia East Baikonur launch facility in Kazakhstan to put the Soyuz MS-27 carrying the trio in orbit. They docked at the station just over three hours later. Kim and Russia's Sergei Rizikov and Alexei Zabritsky are scheduled to spend about eight months at the space outpost. NASA said Kim will conduct scientific investigations and technology demonstrations to help prepare the crew for future space missions and provide benefits to people on Earth. A native of Los Angeles, Kim is a U.S. Navy lieutenant commander and dual-designated naval aviator and flight surgeon. Kim, Rizikov, and Zabritsky are joining NASA astronauts Don Pettit and McLean and Nicole Ayers, Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency's astronaut Takuya Onishi and Russian cosmonauts Alexei Ovchinin, Ivan Vanner, and Kirill Peskov on the space outpost. A smooth launch and a flawless docking to the complex. Again, hatch opening occurring at 6.28 a.m. Central Time, 7.28 a.m. Eastern Time. Congratulatory calls from the balcony in the uh, Russian Mission Control Center before handing it off to uh, Greetings to the entire group. Alexei Jonathan, welcome. Hi, thank you very much. Congratulations as well. Same here, had the start of the expedition. In the main room on the balcony we have guests. They would like to greet you as well. And with that, any questions? Undeterred by a stock market collapse that has continued for days, President Donald Trump threatened additional tariffs on China on Monday, raising fresh concerns that his drive to rebalance the global economy could intensify a financially destructive trade war. According to a Sasakted Press Trump's threat, which he delivered on social media, came after China said it would retaliate against U.S. tariffs he announced last week. If China does not withdraw its 34% increase above their already long-term trading abuses by tomorrow, April 8, 2025, the United States will impose additional tariffs on China of 50%, effective April 9, he wrote on Truth Social. Additionally, all talks with China concerning their requested meetings with us will be terminated. Asked later Monday if he would consider a pause on tariffs that have threatened the global economy, Trump said, we're not looking at that. The U.S. president said he was open to negotiations, if we can make a really fair deal and a good deal for the United States. Trump added that it's possible to have both negotiated settlements with other countries and permanent tariffs. Trump faces mounting pressure in the financial markets and from business leaders to backtrack on his tariff ambitions, yet he has shown no signs of reversing course or finding a message to calm panicked markets. The White House said Monday that Trump would veto a Senate bill that would mandate congressional approval for new tariffs, a bet that the critical mass of Republican lawmakers will loyally back his taxes on imports despite the economic and political chaos being created. And with that, any questions? Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President what is your reaction to the markets what? today, and would you be open to a pause in tariffs to allow for negotiations? Well, we're not looking at that. We have many, many uh, countries that are coming to negotiate deals with us, and they're going to be fair deals. And uh, in certain cases, they're going to be, be paying substantial tariffs. Uh, they'll be fair deals. Uh, as you know, I spoke this morning with the Prime Minister of Japan. And we had a very good conversation. They're coming. And I said, one thing, you're going to have to open up your country because we sold no cars, like zero cars in Japan. And they sold millions of cars into our country. Uh, they don't really take our agriculture, a little bit of it, just to keep us slightly happy. But they don't take what they're supposed to be taking. So we have a great relationship with Japan. We're going to keep it that way. But they're coming in to meet. And other com countries are coming in uh, with China. As you know, against my statement, they put a 34 percent tariff on above what their ridiculous tariffs were already. And I said, if that tariff isn't removed by tomorrow at 12 o'clock, 
we're putting a 50 percent tariff on above the tariffs that we put on. So they've gone for years. They've become a rich country because of people, again, that were in the White House that allowed this to happen. Uh, hundreds of billions of dollars a year that make on us on trade, and it shouldn't be that way. And uh, I have a great relationship with President Xi. I hope it's going to stay that way. I have great respect for China, but they can't do this. Uh, we're just uh, — we're going to have one shot at this, and no other president's going to do this, what I'm doing. And I'll tell you what, it's an honor to do it, because we have been just — just destroyed what they've done to our system. You know, we have $36 trillion of debt for a reason. And uh, the reason is that people allowed it to get that way. So uh, we'll be uh, talking to China. We'll be talking to a lot of different countries. And I think, you know, if, if, if we can make a really fair deal and a good deal for the United States, not a good deal for others. This is America first. It's now America first. And we didn't put America first. We put America last. The people that were in the Oval Office put America last, and we're not going to stand for it. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. President, Mr. President, you to represent the U.S. in the talks with Iran. Right. Um, two questions. Do you expect any of these deals to be made before April 9th? And secondly, there have been some mixed messages from your administration. You're talking about negotiations, and yet others in your administration are saying that these tariffs are actually permanent. What is the actual? What yeah. Well, it could be. They can both be true. Uh, there can be permanent tariffs, and there can also be negotiations, because there are things that we need beyond tariffs. We need open borders. You know, we almost had a deal with China where we're going to open up China. It was almost done. Some of you remember it during my first term, and it was very disappointing. We ended up making a great deal. Fifty billion dollars' worth of uh, product was sold. Fifty billion. You'd like that in Israel. And I made that deal, but it wasn't the deal that I wanted. It was uh, — the deal that I wanted was that plus they're going to open up China so that our companies could go into China and compete with other countries and China for the, you know, for a large number of people. And at the very end, that deal was terminated, and we went to a piece of the deal. And uh, there, so there are a lot of things outside of tariffs, but tariffs are very important. But there are a lot of things like opening up countries that were totally closed. China is essentially a closed country. In fact, it is a closed country. And what they do is they charge tariffs so that if you if you sell cars or if you sell anything, uh, nobody's going to buy it because the price is out of control. But that's true with a lot of other countries also. So we're going to get fair deals and good deals with every country. And if we don't, we're going to have nothing to do with them. They're not going to be allowed to participate in the United States. <laughs>